Hello everyone and welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton and welcome to the Extra Time Match Review for the Sheffield United game which ended 2 all. I'm joined here by Josh and Stuart today. How are you lads? Yeah, 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 good. yeah. yeah I mean if we get right into things, we really, it's going straight into things, the first thing we'll have to talk about is the lineup going into the game. I don't know which one of you wants to start but what were your thoughts when you saw the lineup and the bench especially? Well, obviously, the most obvious was the bench for me. I know you normally look at the line of first, the first 11, but the bench was somebody just obviously because of the lack of depth. Um, obviously, we know with the situation at the moment with our with our with with the transfer situation the day before where we couldn't bring anyone else in and we, we got rid of a Wobie and whatnot. I was slightly worried again. Like, I know we've got players out that might have been just for this one game, but I was slightly worried. I don't know if things was a bit of a struggle for us in the game. I was going, who's going to come on if the first 11 aren't playing that well? Who's going to come on and change the game? You could have argued McNeil, but you know he's not fully, fully fit yet and he's not match ready. But in terms of the, the first 11, I was really happy to see Bramford to come back in um, or actually have a start in the Premier League as he played against Doncaster. Um, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a more... It's players like that, like youngsters who we have messed about over the years. And I think to keep consistent with a player like Brentford, and also you could say at the same time, Patterson. I know he has he has played a number of games for Everton, but he's still relatively young. Um, and I think sometimes we're just going to have to deal with if they do make mistakes, it is one of them. We're just going to have to trust the process with players like that who have got massive potential, especially Brentford, um, who I, you know, right away is, to me is like a Rolls Royce in terms of he has that potential to be the next. The next, what we can see, John Stones, in my eyes. It's just a very similar way of playing. He's a very modern centre-back. But, yeah, I was slightly worried with the Patterson and Young, left and right back. I think they have struggled at times um, since the start of the season. And, you know, Sheffield United are one of them teams. They aren't an excellent footballing side. Um, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't stay off work to watch them, but they have that kind of old-fashioned kind of football sense of passing it on to the wingers, and rely a lot of set pieces and whatnot. And I did worry with their formation, Sheffield United as well, that our wing backs could get exposed. And as we know, it did kind of happen for quite a large period of the game. Um, but yeah, I was happy to see. I was obviously, you know, with all stress about the James Garner situation at the moment. So obviously, Dice has mentioned in his pre match and other interviews that, you know, he is playing out of position. He knows that. Um, we, are li- we literally don't have anyone else to to fill that gap, unfortunately, especially with Dobbin being else. Um, so that was my worry as well. But, you know, we did a job. But, um, yeah, at the same time, I thought that right-hand side, for us, I was slightly worried that it would get exposed and in moments it did. Yeah, Josh, what were your thoughts when you saw the lineup? I mean, to be fair, when I saw the lineup, I thought, Looking at the players we had available, it was probably the the strongest lineup we could could feel at that p- particular time. Uh, very happy to see Branthwaite there. Obviously, uh, a lot of people had the the same kind of thing. Uh, we want to see him get as much game time as possible. He does look more like the one of the better up and coming players here at Everton, um, and better as well. I, I, after seeing him in the midweek game. Obviously, I, I was questioning whether Daish would put him in. I, I think Daish, uh, as mentioned when talking about Calvert Lewin and, and then other players that that have come into the club, that he doesn't like rushing players in. Um, but when I saw his uh, his uh, pre match conference, uh, he seemed quite positive about Beto and, and including him. I think he mentioned about Beto's attitude and and you know really wanting to play and, and prove himself and that. Uh, so I I had a, a sneaking suspicion that he would be included, but obviously, like I said, with with Daesh being um, unsure about pushing players in before they're ready, um, so I was happy to see him uh, because of the impact he had in that midweek game, and I I think he, even in in the game against Sheffield, I think you can see the the clear difference. Obviously, we've we've struggled in that position, so uh, having better win was was great from the start, and obviously uh, seeing Dan Juma as well um, to continue. Uh, his his uh, midweek performance was was decent, getting the goal as well. So just getting the confidence in these attacking players, 
Um, so seeing them in, in included from from the very start was was great to see. Uh, you know, obviously touched on Garner being on on the right hand side. You know, there's just no one else. No one else can really take that away. And I think Garner, uh, you know, as a footballer anyway, uh, we've seen him slot into into right back as well. He, he takes takes challenges on like that and and proves himself. And I, I think realistically, the Garner's that player who who you can rely on to do that. You know. Obviously, not not the position he prefers, uh, but I I wouldn't choose any other player. I think to to slot into a position he's maybe unfamiliar with because he he does take that on his on his chest and and you know and does decent. Obviously, hope hoping some players come back from from injury and you know take takes that off him and hopefully he can go back into the positions he's more familiar with as soon as possible. But yeah, as far as starting the eleven goes, I think the strongest we 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 probably could could put out there and you know happy to see the the attacking inclusion yeah i think you know when the first part of the game really kicked off it looked like until our goal really looked like typical everton we had an okay start managed to control for a few minutes but then it felt like sheffield united kind of took over until we got that corner and you know a bit of a scrappy goal but you know it was the first goal of the season we're not really going to complain what was the sense of relief from both of you, really, when we scored? Because I know for me personally, to see that first goal of the season in the Premier League finally go in, it was almost like a hope that maybe, OK, now that we've got one, hopefully we could push on a little bit. What were your thoughts? Well, obviously, you know, scoring a goal in any moment is a relief for Everton. Football club, it's barely been a sight we've seen much in the past year or two. Um but we all know, you know, it was going to come at some point. I think overall the displays against Fulham or Wolves, and I've had my opinion against Fulham. I think it was a weaker side. Um, I think we had a bit more freedom in midfield because they had players injured. Um, and I think it gave us more opportunities. And obviously, it was the first game of the season as well. And you know, you want to kind of go out all guns blazing. Um, and then the Wolves won. You know, again, it kind of you know, wolves aren't a great side at the moment. Um, you should be attacking the way we did against them. And I just thought, you know, with it, we're away from home, and it doesn't matter what opposition we play against, we're going to struggle to score goals. We're going to struggle to attack. We're going to have moments in games where it's going to be a frantic time for any of our players to deal with, like in terms of a mistake or something or the heads drop and whatnot. We know how it goes away from home, but to see a goal go in. Um, just knowing that we're a bit competitive away from home rather in the first 15 minutes was a good sight to see. Um, I said we didn't really make create many thing, chances at all. There wasn't really many moments. Obviously, after it, we will discuss. But um, yeah, it was a massive relief in a sense, but it was kind of coming. Um, it had to come at some point. Um, and you kind of felt it was going to be someone like the Corey to score just because when we didn't have a striker last season, you know, we relied on players like that to try and chip in. Um, and it was good to see a set-piece goal going as well. When I noticed that throughout the game, there's a lot of outward, outward, um, outwards corner kicks, um, which obviously they've probably done in training. That we've got the height to do it with Onana. Um, was the physical presence and the the one who's getting the, the end onto the ball. Um, I think that's the thing that we've, we've been trying to learn in training. I think it's it worked in, in that sense, but um, yeah, just more the merrier that the goal went in. And obviously, like I said, it boosts confidence, it eases the pressure off the players to kind of have that belief to carry on. Yeah, Josh, what were your thoughts when the goal went in? Yeah, I mean, like was touched on though, it had to come at some point and I think that was the, the best time for it to come. Obviously, confidence is a massive thing, I think, with every team. But I think, because we see it, it seems like confidence for us is a massive thing for both of the fans and the players as well. So when, you, when you're when going away to a team like Sheffield, who also were looking for their first win, you know, we knew it was going to be a tough game anyway. You know, players uh, being unavailable and, and the struggles that we've had recently, seeing a goal go in, I think, settles the fans down, but also the players as well, because then... Uh, they've they've gone so long without without scoring. Um, they start to obviously feel like it, you know it's a bigger thing than than it than it might really be. Uh, obviously, getting that goal will will settle them down and, and reinforce the idea that they can do, and then maybe they can push on to win. Um, uh, and Decore as well being being the guy to do it. I think he he has offered quite a bit, especially since his um 
since coming back into into the squad under Dyche. So it was great to see him be the guy to do it. And obviously, um, you know, I think he he will be important going going forward this season and especially in the, the goal scoring. I think that's that's what he was brought in to do anyway. And I think we kind of we kind of lost that idea since he was pushed out under Lampard. Uh, obviously coming back, especially at the end of last season and and, and now as well, uh, showing that he can be the guy to to bring in some goals and you know having a squad last season that that really lacked that that goal scoring. You you go through all the the positions and the goal scoring amongst them haven't been that high. Being knowing that we have someone in midfield as well that can you know score a goal as as well as whatever we bring in going forward in the in the attacking positions. It's just nice to see. Yeah, confidence. It was really the main thing, though. You know, I think personally when I saw it, it was just like, well, yeah, we can kick on now and 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 do this because you know Sheffield. You know, they're not they're not the the best team uh, in the league by any means. So it, I think it's one of the teams I think most Evertonians would look at, and, and you know, under normal circumstances, you'd see a Sheffield and think, yeah, we can beat beat a team like them. And and you know, an away game is always going to be tough, but getting that first goal, uh, getting the confidence, the upper hand, it was great to see. So. Uh, yeah, did the the world good for for the confidence on, on my end, and I'm I'm sure they're in too. Yeah, and I think you saw the confidence in the players really in that stretch before the Sheffield United goal. Really, was the fact that it was probably the first time where we've looked not comfortable, but looked like we could actually control the game of football this season. You know, because even in the first half against Doncaster, we were getting you know points comfortably outplayed by the team bottom of the league too, but. Mm. It felt like we were able to take real control of the game. And then Sheffield United, especially, were just relying on long passes and little dinks through Gustavo Hamer and maybe down that left hand side with, I think it was the Russies, the guy's name. But yeah, I think, but then, of course, with, with Everton, it's a, it's a good finish from Archer to make it one all, is the one thing I will say. But, you know, a player like Cameron Archer, who's maybe not got the Premier League experience, but showed in his experience in the Championship and when he's been given a chance under Villa, that he can really finish the chances when he's been given. I think it was a disappointing goal to concede, really, because you would think that someone should have been marking their striker, especially, well, their other striker, of course, McBurney was the one who took it. He took it down really well. You can't fault McBurney, took it down really well, laid it off to Art Drew, finished it probably the best way you could have. But, you know, when you saw that goal go in, what were your thoughts on the goal and the overall play leading up to it from Sheffield United? I think it was just, uh, it's just one of them where obviously some some questions over some of the, the defending and, you know, it, it then becomes, uh, again, with the confidence you you get you you get the the first goal. You think, oh, maybe we can go on for a second, or or at the very least, just to defend really well, as we have in in some other tight games where we've we've pulled through a one nil victory. I think having a goal going against us in in that kind of fashion, you just you just immediately with the the last few few games, immediately upon that goal going in, you kind of just drained of that confidence that that you built up through through getting the lead in the first place. Uh, you know, it was just one of them where. You, you knew that it was going to be a challenging day and and hopefully uh you know that we wouldn't see as many mistakes as maybe led up to that goal and and you know maybe we'd get a bit of luck we could push on but it was always going to be tough after that that goal went in you know confidence wise you, you know like i said going up it's um it's a big thing but then being put down so so quickly it's it's one of them you, you don't like to see it but um yeah like you know Question marks uh, about the defending. Obviously, it was a a decent goal for them, but you know we we I think we could be doing better to to prevent that kind of that kind of uh, opportunity for them. Yeah, like in my eyes, like I thought relatively at the time, it was it was a good goal. Um, you could still class it as you know even Jack Gilker said in a commentary, it's one of them. Sometimes you just can't do nothing about it. It's a well worth goal. Um, I think the only issue with my eyes was there's about two or three players getting on McBurney. Who, like as we said before, he, he had a great touch, great layoff to Archer to finish it off. And um, with Archer, you know what I mean? It's one of them where he's, he's relatively new to the, in terms of playing in the Premier League, um, especially being a starter. Um, and like I said, he scored goals in the Championship. It was kind of a dead ball moment for him to score, um, kind of a penalty for him, to be honest, like the way it, the setup for him. But um, it's one of them. It, to me, it's just one of them. Team goals, like I said, like I think too many players and I'll talk Koski and McBurney throughout the game were at it um, in, a, in a friendly, competitive way. Um, 
But I think at that time, I think there's just a lack of communication at that time. I think there's too focused on the threat of McBeardy with his height, his strength and his presence. Um, I'm not really having probably believing that Archer could do something like that. Um, in my eyes, I can't, I can't, I wouldn't say they underestimate players, but I just think the big danger and the threat was with McBurney. But at the same time, I think potentially Tarkovsky is the most experienced at the back there. I think they could have set themselves up a bit better um, to try and prevent or at least have someone try and block the shot with Archer. But um, like I said, he's all too busy with McBurney at the moment. So, like I said, it's a great finish. You can't do nothing about it. Pickford couldn't do anything about it. And, it's one of them. It can happen in games. Um, but before that, you know, we should have potentially, we should have got a, um, Dan Juma should have done better um, a number of times in the game um, to 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 go 2-0 up potentially. Um, and it's stuff like that. If you know, if you don't take your chances, if you don't have really clear cut chances and you don't take them, then you can get punished like that. It's the Premier League. It is what it is. Um, but I don't think we did re- relatively bad after it um, in terms of display. I just think you know, Sheffield United will have the tails up after a goal like that. But yeah, we'll speak about the second goal in a second. But um yeah, it's one of them to me. I wasn't too I wasn't fuming about it. It was just one of them, um, in my eyes. But like I said, it still could have been prevented. Yeah, and you mentioned it there, and we'll try to go through this last ten, you know, last bit quickly. But that second goal it, it's an unfortunate one, really. Like it, it's hard to really Carter probably shouldn't be given the space to shoot, but again, nothing Pickford can do. And it's just, it's a it's a bad bounce, bounces off the post, onto his back, goes in. Nothing really the goalkeeper could have done there. And then, you know, we're, we're nitpicking them where we say, you know, or oh, a striker who's best known for his finishing in the box, shouldn't have been able to lash one from distance. Usually you'd, you'd have your chances and go, that's not actually a bad shot to let a player have instead of letting him lay it off to someone or something. So, yeah, I think it's really hard. And, you know, I kind of imagine you two have got a similar opinion, really, of where they, it's just an unfortunate goal. And especially considering that, again, we were definitely on top in the game leading up to that goal, really. Yeah, like I said, exactly what you said. That there's no really more other comments about it. I think the only thing for me, I can't recall anyone else being in support for Archer. So, to me, three, I think there's still three defenders at the back. One of them, to me, should still be closing down regardless. Um, I just don't, I just think the guy, the lads just scored young beaming with confidence yeah potentially could have been you know you wouldn't expect him to probably have a shot like that um, but yeah it was it was unlucky it was one of them um, it's just, just a massive luck for Everton um, yeah after all the work we did in the first half and I thought we was kind of, kind of in control to kind of be 2-1 down to half time was a bit disappointing in my eyes yeah, and I imagine your thoughts were similar to yours. Yeah, yeah, just, just an unlucky one. I mean, you know, like 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 it's been said, not too much that that really can stop a shot like that. I mean, it's more about stopping the 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 opportunity arising. But obviously, once he once he took that shot, I mean, it was a it was a great shot, like it's been said. But yeah, I mean, what would I like to to see that been been prevented, and then hopefully. Hopefully, move on to then, you know, push on on that on that game with the 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 goal we scored and the you know the advantage we had. But you know, obviously, that that second half would would produce some uh, that first half. Sorry, would produce some more uh, unlucky turns. Yeah, and I think you know, going into the second half and when the second half started, I think it was clear that whatever Sean Dyche said worked because that first stretch leading up to the second goal that we got was really good football, some of the best we've played this season. And especially the goal leading up to uh, to Dan Juma's goal, really. Uh, everything that led up to it, some really good play to get down that right-hand side. And then Patterson, again, Patterson's a player who's got a lot of stick. And, you know, again, he's a professional footballer. He's going to get sticks up, deservedly so. His performances haven't been, you know, they haven't been amazing, but I don't know what a lot of people expect from a young right-back. He, they've been... We, fans have expected more, but then again, he he stepped up in the moment. The ball to Dan Juma is... You, he couldn't have done it any better if he, you know, if he tried that another one hundred times. And that's not a slander on him as a player. That's just the ball was that good. He put it in the perfect pocket for Dan Juma, and it, for Dan Juma, it was just a practically. He probably could have rolled it in and scored. It was that easy and how well placed. But how were you both feeling in the lead up to the goal, and then when the second goal actually went in? Well, I thought we come out of the traps um, with an attacking intent, uh, um, a real attacking intent. Um, a no fear kind of 
way it was nice to see because you, the confidence in the heads could have dropped after that unlucky goal before half time. And like I said, 2 1 down, and better was through, missed the in my eyes, a glorious chance, but he did initially fantastic. And better to me, he's unbelievable. He looks unbelievable. All the attributes to be a top striker in my eyes, and that's not just because he's played two games against Doncaster and Sheffield United. It's just the way he plays. He's a breath of fresh air. But he should, he, in my eyes, should have finished that chance. Um, did all the hard work and the easy part. You know, like I said, scoring is hard. It's the hardest thing to do. But I thought he did all the work to 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 make it easy for himself to score. But he didn't. And yeah, just a bit of the build-up play before then was pretty nice. You know what I mean? Like it was kind of, I said, he was getting bodies forward, um, and like the goal itself was great. Um, just a real nice set of player, kind of like an idea and an identity. And I thought that throughout the game, when we was attacking, there seemed to be a bit of an understanding between the players. I felt a bit confident every time we went forward. There was always, it always felt like we'd been guessing for the past couple of seasons how to go forward. There was no real identity and idea. Now it does. It feels like Dan Juma knows how to link up with better. They see the relationship there. Um, and so throughout the team as well, the Corey given space as well. But yeah, I thought it was a really, like I said, like you said yourself, um, it was a really good goal. Um, like I said, Patterson couldn't do any more than that. Obviously, before Patterson crossed the ball, I thought he's going to blaze it over just because of the type of game he's having. But luckily for us, he didn't. And Dan Juma is there as a nuisance as he was all game to just smash it into the back post. It's a, it's a great moment. But after that, I think we should have pushed on. I think Sheffield United were on their tails ends. Yeah, and Josh, what were your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it was a great, great time for the goal, obviously not not too far, um, you know, after uh, the half time, You know, so we, we had time after that goal to obviously step up and hopefully push on obviously that wasn't to be but to to score that that early on in the second half was, was great and you know like like you mentioned about Patterson I think uh you know he has had a lot of stick obviously he's got you know massive boots to fill with with uh Seamus Coleman being being before him but uh you know and I think unfortunately for him when he first came in he, he didn't have too many uh games and then he, then he had a, a a decent run before he got injured and I actually thought he was yeah he had a great great performance sure in that time uh it kind of opened my eyes to what what he could be and, and you know his, his role in the Everton team moving forward but obviously when he got that injury it kind of kind of stopped that uh for him uh, you know uh you know, he was out for a while and then then struggled to get back into the side because he he, he picked up some of a little little injuries along the way as well so he's he's had a little little issue with getting you know a massive run of games but I always every time people you know might say something about him I always think about that first run he had where you could really see a, a future for him at the club um and you know it's times like this where he where he hits across like that and you think see I, I mean there could be something there and, and I do hope he gets that chance I mean coming from you know the Scottish League obviously uh, you know, people's opinions about how the Scottish League matches up with with leagues like the Premier League, you know, is out there. But um, you know, it's it's a big transition for him. And and whilst he has been at Everton for a bit, he hasn't had that that massive run of games to really get himself, you know, in and amongst it, uh, you know, in in at Premier League level. So I do hope he just has that opportunity to really show what he is about as a player. And I mean, you know, he's still young, so uh, he has, you know, mistakes will be made, and and obviously he will learn from them. But it's stuff like like that game where you know a cross like that can can produce a, a goal so easily, and you, you love to see it from from your fullbacks to to push up the field like that and and have the confidence really to to take a, a cross like that because like um like Stuart mentioned the you can you can hit a ball like that and it can it can just blast off into into the stands and you look like a you look silly doing it and then obviously that affects your confidence to then go ahead and do it again so to see it to see him be being able to pull it off because then it's just a an easy hit in for for Dan Juma to to then also I mean Dan Juma again to to get a call from from this game and the midweek game hopefully whilst um maybe performance wise Dan Juma wasn't amazing on the day just you know being able to get that goal will hopefully you know push on his confidence and and allow it because you know you can have games like that where maybe you don't offer too much going forward but you you get that goal and then then that can really start to snowball then into upcoming games which is what you want from your second players especially you know us where we are currently where 
Um, confidence isn't massively high amongst amongst the players, so to be able to get a, another goal from from midweek and and on on Saturday, it's it's great for him. So yeah, happy to see see the the second goal, especially at the the time it was at. It's a shame we couldn't push forward to to really challenge Sheffield United and and you know uh, get more from the game, but it was great to see. Yeah, and we actually only have a minute in the call left, so I'm going to do my best to to speed run the rest of the game for everyone here before we get into our next thing. But yeah, again, it uh, the rest of the second half was really it was one of those where it was one for the neutrals. Really, it's one of those games where you probably didn't want to be either an Everton or a Sheffield United fan for that last thing because it looked like either team could get the goal. But I think the big moment of the second half is the pick for double, might have even been a triple save. Again, it, it's one of those where it's hard to really describe because it seems like Pickford does this in every big occasion at the point where he'll make multiple save of the season contenders to really keep us in the game. And he did it again, you know, fantastic save to actually get to the ball, dive high and get it. And then, of course, on the floor, someone blasted, they blasted it at his face, but he still had to be in the position to save it. You have, you've seen goalkeepers move out of the way of them before. And again, Pickford really kept us in the game and stopped us from losing it. But if you did enjoy that video, make sure to please like and subscribe to the channel. Follow the Toffee Blues on Twitter. I have a news feed. Thank you both for coming on. And I will Please. see you all for the next Thank video. You.